as believers were encouraged throughout Scripture to be growing. We're told to be going from babes in our faith to mature believers. And a primary way that we do that is through the assembly of the church, through the teaching ministry of the church, through the worship, through the ordinances, all of that, the gathering, the assembly of the church is where a lot of our growth comes from. But then there's this question, well, how do we continue to grow as believers? How do we continue to, to have this upward movement in our lives when the assembly is on pause, when the assembly is stopped? And for you in your personal life, that can maybe look a lot of different ways. For us, uh, the pause is due to the coronavirus pandemic. And we're looking at this situation, and, and there's this question maybe that a lot of people have. How do you grow in your faith when the assembly is on pause, when this big part of our growth is on pause? So, Dad, how would you answer that question? Well, I would go back to what you said early on, and that is that uh, the body of believers, the collective assembly, is critical to church growth. Yeah. So I don't want to let go of that. When you were talking about that, I was turning to Ephesians 4, and verse 11 and following down through verse 16, we have several important things, and I'm not going to expound the whole passage here, but verse 11 talks about pastors and teachers that God has given to the church. And then the purpose for it is spelled out in the following verses, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, to build up, there's your growth term, right? To mm -hmm. build up the body of Christ until, and it goes on from there, and then you drop down to the end of that passage, uh, the whole body together promoting the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. So I don't want to stray too far from the concrete biblical reality that the church gathering where God has placed pastors and teachers, mm -hmm. that is critical for a believer's growth. I don't want to stray too far from that. Absolutely. Yeah. But but taking that into consideration, right, that, that assembly being so important, uh, which it is, and, and Scripture testifies to that in tons of different places, if that assembly is at a point where they can't meet, for a real reason, not something petty and small, but for an actual real reason the assembly can't meet, how would you encourage the church but, to grow? But I'm going to cut you off again and say Hebrews 10, 25 says, do not forsake the assembly. Right. So, again, that's a crystal clear command. And I believe the assembly there that's being referred to is this Lord's Day, first day of the week, celebration of the first day of the week, because that was the day where Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And that assembly that happens there is absolutely critical for growth. And one of the things that is extremely important for us to understand is the more you miss church, the less you miss church. And right. we have to keep our minds wrapped around that critical reality. God has called, if he's called you at all, if he's called me and you at all, he's called us into community. Yes. And we cannot forsake that assembly because that's a primary means of growth. But what were you asking? If you were calling this a primary means of growth, which I'm absolutely for, what are other primary means of growth that we can take <coughs> part in so we can be growing in the midst of a time where the assembly can't gather? Yeah, well, it, this isn't this isn't outside of the assembly versus inside. This is right. both. Mm -hmm. But the one, one of the primary means of growth for any believer is time in God's Word. And again, that's, that's both inside and outside the assembly. So inside the assembly or times when you or we are able to meet, um, believers need to be men and women, boys and girls, whatever it is, of God's Word on a regular systematic, quality, quantity, time basis, inside or outside the assembly. But that can continue, obviously, even if the church can't do that all-important function of meeting. So, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Did you memorize this as a boy? I did. Yep. That's right, you did. So, <laughs> all Scripture is, and now I'm going to use the, the best terminology, I believe, faithful to the Greek there. All scripture is God-breathed. 
and as it goes on, it's profitable for teaching and for rebuking and for correcting and for training to the end of, verse 17, to the end of the, the man of God or the woman of God being complete and equipped for every good work. Yeah. So time here in this tool that God has given us, this revelation of himself to us is critical for an individual's growth. Yeah, and I think there is something interesting about that terminology that I really like. The terminology of equipping, that the Bible equips us. It gives us, it gives us tools we need as believers. It gives us weapons. It gives us whatever it may be, to fully equip, give you the things that you need as a believer to get you from point A to point B, to get you on that growth path. It equips you. Uh, and I think that's so clear, the terminology that it uses, and, and really a, a good picture, a word picture for us uh, as we are on this growth journey. Let, let me give you another picture. This goes back to my time at Grace Theological Seminary, and I had a professor, Dr. Mark Soto, and he would, would often talk about sheep and shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he would talk about the importance of the sheep being led by the shepherd to green pastures. And then they would feed. Yeah. But what you didn't see is the shepherd reaching down and pulling out the grass and sticking it in their mouth. You can lead the sheep to feed, mm -hmm. um, but they have to feed. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't... You can't make them drink. You can't make the horse drink. So yeah. ultimately, the responsibility falls on that man or woman, regardless of assembly, ability to feed on God's Word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So reading your Bible, huge in this growth pattern. What other thing or things would you say are big? Well, an obvious one then would be prayer, spending time with God. So in the book of Exodus, we see Moses going up on the mountain and spending time with God. And what happened when he came down? His face was shining. His face was shining so much that he had to veil it uh, before the people. So that's a different idea on prayer. That's not just going to God with your needs. I need this, I need this, I want that, I want that. They need this, I want that, they want... That's just spending time with God. And I understand this is spending time with God. But prayer has to be about relationship. And just, I have the ability now, because of my high priest, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to go before the very presence of God the Father. I'm going to take advantage of that. I am going to dwell in His presence. I am going to hang out with Him. It's relationship. Yeah. And, as was the case with Moses, it changes a person. So prayer, in addition to Bible reading, is critical for a believer's growth. Yeah, and I would, just to build on that, uh, prayer isn't just some flippant thing that we do, where we, where we hurl up um, random requests and things to God. You realize who you're in the presence of. Right, exactly. And I was just reading today in Matthew, uh, where Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. We often call it the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. And he had to teach them, look, this is the format of what prayer should look like. It's not just hurling up these things. There's something sacred about this prayer, this, this ability we have to come before God's presence that uh, it's really, it, it's a beautiful thing that we should take advantage of um, and learn to do uh, well. Yeah, and if you're, a, if you're a baby Christian, if you would classify yourself that way, or a baby Christian in regards to prayer, learning how to pray is important, mm -hmm. but you don't have to learn how to pray exactly right before you can just go and spend. If you are united with Christ, you have access to the Father. Yeah. Go humbly, go often, uh, but go. And as you go and as you continue to learn, you'll learn perhaps better ways to pray. Right. God, but spend the time. Yeah. God refines his people. Yes. Yep. yes. So growth comes through reading your Bible, comes through prayer. Uh, what else, uh, if anything, can we... Yeah. I, I would go back to that Hebrews 10 passage, Hebrews 10, 25, which says, don't forsake the assembly. And again, as I started out at the beginning of our time together, that is very critical because the more you miss, the less you miss. Uh, we cannot forget that or lose sight of it. But if you go earlier in Hebrews to chapter 3, he says, encourage each other daily. daily. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so what we're seeing when people can't in our present circumstances, and these circumstances will change from month to month and in, in what they are with uh, any of our viewers now may, may vary, but uh, what we're seeing now when people aren't able to assemble is with several of those people and growing, the non-platform gifts in the church, so maybe a pastor teacher gifting is a what we might call a platform gift, the non-platform gifts of just calling someone up and encouraging them or running to the store for them or preparing a meal for them or a loaf of bread or some cookies or whatever those types of uh, compassion and encouraging and praying for one another gifts, those are kind of rising to the surface because, again, yes, prayer, yes, Bible reading, but also encouraging encouraging each other mm -hmm. daily with the various gifts that God has given to the body. Yeah, and if I could encourage people, I don't want to overuse the term, but encourage people to get creative in how that encouragement happens. Uh, for instance, my boss at Grace College, uh, she sent me a care package in the mail. It was, uh, it was small, it was just uh, you know, a picture of my team that I would work with, and it was some, some coffee grounds, some candies, a little note, something along those lines. And uh, she sent it to me. And that was an incredible encouragement, uh, something that she just spent a little bit of time doing, something that was a little bit out of the box. It wasn't just a phone call, but it was extremely encouraging. And you didn't think to share any of that coffee with your dad? <laughs> it's back at the house if you want some. <laughs> but, I will remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you to your boss yes. for Lawrence sharing his coffee with me. <laughs> <laughs> but just in summary uh, for you guys, there are definitely ways that we can be growing uh, in the midst of a time where we can't assemble. Uh, some of those ways that we've mentioned here, reading our Bibles, getting God's Word. There's so much that you can learn, uh, so much that you can grow in, in your relationship with God, your relationship with Christ, your walk. Uh, in that way, get it's, in God's word. It's sweeter than honey on a honeycomb. Yes, yeah. And start praying. Uh, if that's not a habit for you daily, uh, pray to God. Talk to him. Grow in your relationship in that way. Communicate with God. That is an incredible privilege that we have. And then also be encouraging one another. Get out there, call people up, text people, do something to encourage fellow believers and grow in your faith. Love one another. Love one another.